the wisdom flow. Revenue ramp, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Can you introduce yourself and uh, talk about your journey a bit? Yeah, absolutely. So, firstly, thank you so much for having me on the call. Um, to begin with, uh, I started my sales career as such. I mean, I'm only going to be talking about uh, my professional career at this point. So, I started my sales career back in 2016. Uh, but uh, I would probably say I was probably a seller even before that, right? Even during college. Um, so, I've done bachelor's in engineering, master's in engineering, six years of engineering. Uh, so, even through engineering, uh, used to sell things, right? For example, I used to, I was a part-time seller for a bunch of things. Still take passion in selling uh, small jewelries or I think basically selling is pretty exciting for me. So during, the reason I joined Master of Engineering was to become a teacher. So I genuinely like teaching, teaching or, or being, being in that profession where I'm able to explain things. But towards the end of the Master's Engineering course, I realized that I'm probably not that good at engineering. So I don't think I'll be a fair, I'll be doing a fair job uh, teaching, right? So that's when I pivoted. I said, okay, what else do I know? The only other thing I probably know is sales in my life. Uh, I can talk about things. I can sell about, uh, I probably explain things, right? That's what I always wanted to do. Maybe not as a teacher, but as a seller. I still have to explain things. I still have to educate people about what I uh, want to sell and all, all that stuff. So that's where it started, uh, the journey as a seller. Uh, and the first job that I got uh, back in 2016 was with a company called uh, Nokri.com. A lot of Indian people will know that. Uh, so I was working for like two years handling uh, a bunch of key accounts, like they call it. Uh, all, so uh, I was in Chennai and uh, I'm still in Chennai, by the way. So uh, I was handling the largest portfolio at, at that point, almost 93 companies, while an average seller would have about 40, 50 companies. So I was having 93 companies. Uh, so I was, I'm really grateful for the team that they trusted me with that large set of accounts with so many big companies and corporates. Um, and also I was, I always used to mention to people that I was the only non MBA person in that entire office, uh, who was a seller. So that's how I started my journey. Uh, it was a field sales, corporate sales, uh, key account management, more like, um, nurturing existing accounts, getting more business from them and all that stuff. It was pretty exciting, uh, initially, uh, as a typical Indian sales, you know how, uh, I mean, if people you've involved in selling in the Indian market, you know how complex and hard it is at times, uh, but that's where it started and something strange happened in, in that journey, which was, uh, I had a, a medical condition, which I had to undergo surgery for, uh, and, uh, that took away some months of mine. Right. So I took a, uh, I took a break for, I mean, I got my surgery done while I was working, uh, but it did not heal properly. It took like six, seven months, eight months, uh, to, so I had to redo, like undergo that surgery quite a few times, two or three times. And then I finally decided to take a break. It was just getting to me. I said, okay, let's take a break for two months. And at that point, I was not doing anything. I didn't know what to do next. Uh, but I still wanted to sell, sell something. Um, that's when one of my college friends, uh, I, I met the college friend at a wedding. And I said, hey, if there's any opening in your company, as always, right? We keep talking about openings, 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 referrals. That struck a deal. And that was my entry into uh, the SaaS world. So I didn't know what SaaS was. I didn't know that people actually sell software. People can actually sell to other countries sitting in India. All of that was very alien to me. Uh, but that's how I started. Uh, that was Happy Fox for two years. And then eventually transitioned. And now I'm uh, here at Six Sense. Been only in the SaaS world in the last uh, probably three, four, five, seven years, six years now. Yeah, um, thank you so much, uh, Deepak. Uh, so... As you have like spent all of your career now, probably in selling, right? So if, uh, if, if you can basically explain what your typical day of selling looks like, like, how do you start your day and, uh, what, what goes into your day, right? Yeah. Um, so starting a day is very important for me. Uh, starting a day, right. Is very important for me. Uh, that's something that I've evolved over a period of time, right? Uh, when you're, when you're, I I'm still young, but I'd just like to say that when you're younger in the sales world, uh, you may not bother about few things, but you're just very nice. You're just energetic. You're still energetic, but there's certain things I I'd like to do, uh, especially when you're working from home and, you know, doing these remote kind of jobs, it's important to set the tone or set the environment, right? So. I have a certain routine, so I make sure that the room is clean. I make sure that I take, you know, uh, I'm prepared for the day by, you know, just, just, just a good, a good shower. shower. Like I, I, I tell this to my team members as well. Uh, if they ask me what's something that's working for you, I say I, I take a shower before, right before work. 
uh, and I, you know, make sure that I'm prepared. Um, some people believe in prayer. Some people believe in some other rituals. Just making sure that you're uh, setting the tone right for your day. Uh, that's very important to me because it, it gives me, gets me into that mindset that, okay, I'm going to be engaging with customers. I'm going to be speaking about certain things which can impact a lot of, uh, a lot of things around them and me. Right, because it involves money, it involves time, it involves uh, business as such, and the kind of products that we sell, they, they directly involve in uh, impacting businesses. So that's my starting ritual. Uh, I want to make sure that everything around me is in its place, so I can be in my place doing my thing. If the if if my environment is not in the right, you know, tone, if it is you know messed up, then I'll probably not feel comfortable. So uh, I don't know if that's old age catching up, but uh, <laughs> that's just how it is now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely, uh, Deepak. Thank you. Uh, I think taking a shower. So basically, you are prepping yourself in a right manner so that you can basically yep. be on a lot more productive. Uh, this yeah. is the ritual that you are playing absolutely uh, so as you said like uh, majorly you are preparing yourself for the day right yeah. and yeah. Uh, so how do you structure your conversation with your internal team to get more uh, like maximize your productivity as well because you need to catch up with your team yeah um, so I would probably say the bunch the bunch of things that happen which are not planned uh, or you know at times they go haywire right because um, on the day certain things take more priority than others but over the period of time what I've realized is there are there's nothing that that cannot be structured so you kind of have certain time frames you block out certain times in your day um, beforehand saying that these are times which I would like to engage with anybody internal so it's easier for them and for me to make sure that, you know, this is the available time. This is where I, you know, pile up all the queries that we may want to discuss, pile up all the different kinds of uh, challenges that we may want to discuss. And uh, because end of the day, contributing to the team and also contributing individually matters a lot more. Uh, unless I'm contributing for my own, you know, uh, contributing to my quota, I don't think I'll be able to do justice to anybody else or speak to anybody uh, about, you know, what we're doing, what, what you should be doing or what you should not be doing. So uh initially it was difficult because there were random calls on the calendars but now i've streamlined that i said okay in a day nine hours i'll probably not spend more than one hour uh with these internal discussions and i kind of you know just decline them decline them decline them, even if they're on my calendar so that i can focus better even if it's just for a one hour period Yeah. So Deepak, uh, we'll go into uh, more depth here, right? Yep, so now sure. that you you have been crushing quotas, uh, for a long for a long time, right? What is the most important thing that you would like to highlight to all the A's out there? Uh, and and basically, is is something that you think every A should be knowing of? Yeah. So, um. It's a very stereotypical answer if someone's following cricket and someone's an MS Dhoni fan. Uh, it's about discipline and sticking to the process, right? Um, so that's one of the reasons why I do a, a routine before I begin my day because that helps me get more discipline. It helps me put, you know, put a certain routine uh, to my day. And that's how, you know, the rest of the day also pans out. So one thing which I would definitely say is discipline. Uh, when I say discipline, it has got to do with everything before work, during work, after work. Only then it's easier for you to, you know, measure things. It's easier for you to know when things go right, when things go wrong. Otherwise, it'll all be hay haywire. It's not measurable. It's not scalable. Uh, at times, you wouldn't know what to change. But when you're disciplined, you know that something has gone wrong because you've changed something in your life, in your day-to-day -day activities. Right? So it's easier to go back and correct things if you're disciplined enough. So that's one discipline. Second is not sticking to the process in the sense doing everything you can in your power to learn what is selling about uh, learn about what is selling speaking the right things uh, being approachable and consultative with your customers and eventually not worrying about the result because one thing i've realized is whenever i've worried too much about the result i have not performed uh, it's always put that pressure on me that 
you know, there's expectations around, um, for example, there could be a quarter which has gone really well. Then the following quarter, there'll be expectations that, hey, you will you will again come back and perform uh, in a similar fashion. Then that kind of puts pressure on yourself. Uh, as such, there are people expecting from you, but you don't want to be adding that pressure on yourself. So for me, it's about not worrying too much about what the customers are deciding towards the end. But eventually, if I can give them a good experience as they speak with me, that's my win. Uh, buying or not buying is their decision. I, I cannot, you know, force them or push them to buy. Right. Uh, no, absolutely. I think uh, that is the that is how it should be, right? Yep. So you uh, <laughs> you should not worry about what others are thinking. You should give yeah. your best. Is something Correct. that you are striving for. So one thing I would like to like talk about here is that what is the most difficult part of your job? which which you think uh is is actually eating up your time or is basically uh is redundant of sort right ah uh, the the bunch of things like that but I, if i look back at it uh, there was a recent interview by uh, one of the famous footballers of india right uh, he mentioned that in a 90 minute match you only get like 2 or 3 minutes to have the ball you know, rest of it is all running around. You just run from pillar to post and then eventually you get two to three minutes to perform. I think it's the same thing with sales as well. Uh, you do a bunch of redundant things, which is, for example, admin work. Uh, you probably have to update a bunch of things, data points within your, you know, uh, keeping d data updated uh, for basically management review, uh, which is which not is not necessarily your task, or, but it is important on a bigger picture. Second is... Uh, training sessions so you may be involved in a lot of trainings you may have already gone through trainings but you still have to go through as part of a team uh, enablement um, help other reps go through the same training when they onboard the bunch of things that may be redundant uh, as a rep but it's important we still go through that and the hardest part is to do the things which are not very interesting um, and to be disciplined with it continuously doing that irrespective of whether you're getting bored or not no, absolutely. Uh, and and what do you think? Like, uh, just to drive, uh, because by the time you are getting with a with a client on a call, right? There has been a lot of work that has gone through to bring Correct. that client uh, on the you, call. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, how do you define like? Because it is a teamwork that everybody Correct. is doing, right? So, Correct. how do you define that? How important? Is, a teamwork of that sort is required, right? If the SDR doing the right work, you doing your yeah. job, RevOps doing their yeah. own job, and then yeah. all the, all the instrumentation well. uh, that is being yeah. done, right? So, how, what do you yeah. think? Like, what is the instrumentation there? How important it is? Um, it is. It cannot be measured the importance of it because at times there are you know deals which you will probably win not because of you, because of some other effort. It could be the effort of the leadership team. It could be the effort of some other, you know, customer's referee. It could be because of some testimony. Uh, it could be because of the SDR who's done a really good job to, you know, warm that lead up. So there are a bunch of factors, which is why I do not always, you know, uh, I never feel that this is my deal or this is something that I have achieved. Uh, I probably just I'm grateful and lucky to be in that position to be getting that quota and the commissions accordingly uh, for whatever quota I've achieved. So which is one of the reasons which keeps, uh, I think, which keeps me going or keeps me grounded. Uh, so it's not my deal as such. It can never be, right? It, it has to be marketing. Before even SDR, it is marketing uh, who spends a lot of money, gets ads in front of people, get them inbound or even try outbound SDRs or BDRs. So there are a lot of people involved in the process. I'm probably doing a 30, 40% work of that journey. Um, and yeah, I just have to make sure that I'm doing my part, right? Um, eventually everybody else comes and supports you. So, And is, is there, uh, is there an area that you think, uh, is very much required for in terms of help like uh if if because let's say if you can get an assistant of sort right then yeah. what it would be how can you imagine that assistant to be let's say it, if it is uh i'm not talking about any ai assistant of sort Correct. let's say like people have their assistant right so what are the uh think that you you would prefer being 
outsource from your end or like if there would have been an assistant it would be great to have an assistant of that sort yeah so i um uh, a bunch of things which are redundant again uh, and that in that, that does not involve me directly in the sense um for example there's enablements or there's some sort of documentation that needs to be prepared or some sort of knowledge base article that you can contribute to or uh, there are a lot of things that you know small small things which involves in improving the process uh which is not directly impacting you on the day on the you know um, in the month for the quota and everything but you still have to involve for the betterment or of the process now those kind of things can always be sourced if possible and then of course uh let's say simple things even creating an opportunity, opportunity within the crm updating the opportunity within the crm so if you know i can i actually write notes uh, for every conversation that i have but that note has to translate into my crm i'm writing it on pen and paper but that has to be translated if someone can come and just copy paste what i've written uh, that will help me uh, so there are a bunch of things uh, which does not so in hindsight the only thing i'd like to be doing is speaking with customers negotiating and closing the rest of it can all be <laughs> done by the assistant if possible when yeah. it makes sense uh, uh w- one question uh, is like it is written so we all face setbacks right yeah so can you share a specific failure or challenge that you faced it in your sales career and would like to highlight uh that that thing and it it has reshaped your persona per se yeah absolutely so this was during the sdr days uh, at a company called chargeby uh i think the first year that i onboarded uh, that i got onboarded which was 2020 uh, i performed really well uh when i say really well i uh, uh, got the presidents club award and all that uh, but towards the end which was december uh, i still remember it very clearly that um uh, i performed well but i was not given the month uh, award the, i still won the presidents club but i was not okay that was good but even the monthly award was very important to me because i performed well and i i was pretty competitive I, i still am so uh that was not given uh for some reason they said i mean obviously it was for the team they they decided that somebody else should be given that award that kind of impacted me uh, a little bit i i got a little upset about it i said no if if my work is not recognized why should i give my best you know so i pulled myself back i said no i i don't think i'm going to care about the numbers anymore i took a couple of months you know cool i just didn't bother about the numbers january february went by uh, even in fact even in march a little bit uh, was still the same attitude and that's when i realized i'm not hurting anybody but my own you know career or reputation or quota uh, so i then uh, then there was a switch in april um uh, Uh, I still remember we shifted regions. Uh, I started working for APAC. It was pretty peak COVID at that point, March, April in India, 2021. And uh, yeah, so I then I, I took it off. I took off from there. Like uh, it was a very good month. And then from there on, I, I was only playing catch up because the first quarter, I lost the entire quarter uh, because of my attitude. Uh, it was nobody's fault. Um, I was just angry that I was not being recognized. Then I... I soon realized that I'm not doing you know good for myself so that was one setback uh, and the lesson was learned that doesn't matter who's appreciating or who's not appreciating it's on me to get my job done uh, it's it's on me to uh, earn money for my family it's very simple as that uh, and the second setback i remember was in six cents uh, when i recently when i joined initially first month was good uh um, second third month there was hardly any sales i was low on confidence uh and the, there was a month where there was nothing till the last day and then i got 10% of my quota just 10% and there was like okay something to end the month but it was still very bad right um so what helped me eventually was you know obviously i speak with a lot of mentors having mentors help um you know they calm me down um they they show you the real picture that hey this is where you're going wrong uh, you're probably pushing yourself too hard at times you just have to let go relax do your job do your best because that's that's the best that is uh, uh, possible uh, but if you hold on too tight if you become too desperate um and if you're not doing the right things if you're not disciplined then you're not going to really make a difference so this was back in january 2022 and then things changed um so if you take back my quota and look at the results after that it's been uh, a dream um uh, if someone said that this is the num- this is the number you'll have after one year two years um i wouldn't be you know i, I wouldn't believe that but yeah 
No, no, cool. Thank you so much, uh, Deepak. So, rejections are part of sales, right? Yes. And uh, and I think uh, there are only certain percentage of conversions that you get. So, how do you approach like rejections, objection handling, yeah. and and uh, yeah. uh, like how you have evolved yourself with rejections because it they come every day, right? Correct. So, how yeah, how so... how do you deal with rejections? Yeah, one of the setbacks that I mentioned is also got to do with rejection, right? Uh, but that was not external rejection, it was internal rejection, that your effort was not recognized. Uh, so that is one important lesson that do not bother or let let it not bother you much. Of course, it is important. Um, one thing it did tell me uh, about myself is that I'm pretty competitive. It mattered to me that I was being recognized because I gave my best and I was, the numbers showed up there. But eventually I learned that it's okay. Uh, if external validation is not there, the same thing goes with customers. So if, you know, your demo is great, you've done a great job in, in the entire process, but for some reason, the deal does not happen or for some reason you just lose the deal. It's okay. Uh, somebody has to win the deal. Uh, it is. So some other seller in some other company, as far as this domain is selling, you are in business. Be happy about that. Um, so either you're buying, uh, someone's buying from you. Or someone's buying from a friend of yours at a different company in a similar product. So that's fine. So that's how I take it. That either I win or someone in the same space wins. That's fine. And second is not worrying too much about it. Um, if you put too much pressure on yourself, you're not going to be uh, performing at your peak. So. No, no, great. Uh, achha, we would like to hear one story uh, where like you have turned a struggling account, which was going to be lost to a winning deal, right? So would love yeah. to hear that story. Yeah, this is only persistence uh, with everything. So there are quite a few deals. So the kind of deal cycle that we typically have in the segment that I sell is about probably two, three weeks max, right? Um, that should be a turnaround time. But there have been deals where I've worked on them for seven months, one year. Uh, and they, we just keep following up, keep following up, keep following up. And so these are the deals that I don't worry about. Again, these are like in the room, but not the center of the room, right? It's there somewhere in the corner. You just keep saying hi to them. Um, so there are multiple reasons. When I say struggling deal, um, one of these stories is uh, about a customer who, let's say, started talking to me in the December, in month of December. Very good fit. Uh, everything went well. Uh, we thought they'd buy. Uh, and all of a sudden they changed because some new startup has come in the picture and they said, this is, we're going to offer you something at uh, probably uh, 3% of the entire money that I'm asking them to pay me. So that, so no one's going to say no, right? And they said, you, in fact, I was the one who said, you, you know what, go try it out. Because... If I keep pushing you saying, no, no, they're a startup, they're not going to help you as much as I can or my product can, uh, that's not going to help. So I recommended that take three months off, uh, try their product because it's hardly any money. If it works for you, why not? You know, at the end of the day, I'm in your team. I want you to succeed. That's my first thing. My customers have to succeed, whether it's with me or not. So we let them go, but the relationship was on. We kept conversations going. Uh, we, I kept checking on, okay, how is it going? Is it working well? Is it meeting your expectation? Uh, so that kept happening. And then uh, three months later, they came back and said, no, that's, this, is, uh, this is not worth it. Uh, I, I said, the only thing you lost is not money, but time, which is fine. Uh, so that 3% of that, whatever money that was, it, it, didn't, it didn't matter, but the time was lost. Uh, and then comes in their existing product stack. Uh, they say, uh, no, we still have renewals pending. I mean, we still have something which is going on and we cannot renew this immediately. Uh, so yeah, I think that is where we took a lot of help from leadership team, right? We got uh, some leadership involved. Some titles help you uh, at times, right? So you need to make sure that some VPs or, you know, see us uh, executive VPs and all those kind of titles involved in deals, which is why I say it's not entirely my deal. It cannot be. Uh, it has to be a team effort and they kind of pushed it along saying, okay, we can support you. See, there's a good case. We we believe that we can actually add value for your, uh, your business process. And that's how we want it. So the lesson from here is to play for your customer. Uh, and keep at it. Uh, don't don't give up on them if there is a good, good case. Obviously, you know, there's some cases which don't match. So you can just say, Hey, we are on the right foot. But if there's a right foot, don't give up early. So.
Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Deepak. Uh, so, we have heard a lot about that there are hustle cultures in, in sales, right? So, uh, so there is an there is immense pressure on people while yeah. working in sales. Correct. So, what do you edu- educate? Like, uh, do you do you educate? Like, there was a discussion, right? Forty hours versus sixty hours, and so right. So, what do you educate? Uh, or like, what do you follow? Is it like okay? hustle is also important and work and work life balance is also important so how do you differentiate and what is your thought process there uh, it is very subjective depends on what people prefer uh, more than what's the right thing right uh, so for example somebody can be at their point of life where uh, they're pretty young they have they don't have too much uh, of a family burden or responsibility to carry forward so they they have different choices that they can make uh, while at the same time somebody who's uh probably having a family who has kids or who's in sales uh they cannot come back and say you know what i need a vacation to thailand uh for one week because i have uh because i'm just too bored that can't happen so it is all subjective um to each their own uh, i don't think i have a same 40 or 60 hours i just believe that do what is required for the moment for the month for the day and that's about it doesn't matter how so it is uh 40 hours or 42 hours it's fine no no absolutely uh i think that's about time deepak uh, thank you so much yeah. for uh sharing your talk process sharing your words and sharing your experience yeah